G'day, how you doing? This is what you don't see. This is what you don't see when you're watching hunting and fishing videos on YouTube. You don't see guys like me coming down in their truck, looking at what's going on out in the water every day, looking for what's in the sky. That would be gannets that could be diving, could be blackback gulls that are circling, looking for fish being pushed to the top. The turns, the white turns that circle, they're the telltale signs that there's car way underneath. There's a few birds out here, but not enough to get my interest. It's an offshore breeze, it's flattened everything out. It's actually a very strong wind today, it's 27 degrees. But I'm not seeing anything here that makes me want to put my energy into going out there. So I'm going back in the truck and going further down the coast. This is my third time today I've been down here. And when you're in a kayak, you're using a lot of energy to get out there. Even with an offshore breeze, you're still got to get in against the wind. So you want to be sure when you go out there that you're hitting fish. Like I said, this is what you don't see. I can see maybe a bird or two down further down the coast. So we'll head on down the coast and see what we can find. Maybe we get lucky. Seatbelt on, Clay. I hate it when that happens. Right, let's have a look down here and see if there's any sign of life. So what we're chasing today is kawai and kingfish. If it was snapper, I wouldn't be so concerned about what's on the top because they can be down underneath, and they probably are. But I'm trying to get that elusive kingy. And kawai is always your go-to because where there's kawai, when the temperature's warm enough, over 17, 18 degrees, there'll be kingfish below. And I can see down here, no birds working still, nothing. This is Pine Hill Reserve where I've just looked. I catch a lot of fish around here and straight off here. But today there's just nothing out there that really makes me want to put the kayak in the water. So I'm going to go further down the beach as I head down the coast. I'm trying to find those birds working. Because the fish move around schools and the birds follow the fish. It could all change in a heartbeat. Suddenly there could be thousands of birds out there. Well, hundreds, not thousands. I can see birds flying down there. Got turns. So there could actually be kawai out here. There's a few hanging around here. Yes, there's more further out there. Way out there. Way, way out. That could be hopeful. Has been without a doubt one of the fastest transitions I've ever done. It's about five or six birds still circling out there right now and we're into it. Straight out here, bit of black water. This is what I call hunting for fish, literally. Yeah, looking for the sign, you're paddling out. As soon as I get some deeper water, oh man, are they still there or have they gone? Don't tell me, don't tell me, I can't see them. Oh shit. Oh, this is not good. Nothing and nothing there. Right, we'll just keep going out in the hopes they come back in. I can go that quickly. Not seeing them, not seeing them. Oh no, a couple out in front of me. Yeah, not, not fishing though, it looks like the fish have stopped. Oh, let's get out there and see what we can find. Report back later, hopefully, hopefully get a car wire. I'm gonna tow a lure as soon as I get into some deeper water. In fact, we can probably tow one right near even in the shallow water. It won't do any harm. That's what I'm gonna be using. Classic something, a bit of silver for car wire. That's my lure for catching kawai. Anything silver will catch them. Just going to drop that behind now. In the hopes that as we go out there, we pick up a live bait. Oh yes, there's a few birds working. About three or four birds working down there. Let's get this thing out here in the water. We can easily catch a, a little bait fish. Just want to catch a bait fish. Well, report back when I get out there. I'm out to where the birds were, and now they're about a kilometre down the beach. That means chasing them straight down in front of me here. They're working, but they're no longer working around here. And I haven't had a hit on the lure, so that's where I've got to go. I can easily get down there and find they're back up here again. It's that quick. That's why having a motorboat chasing it would be a lot easier. Well, they're miles ahead of me now. They were back there. 
I'm about halfway through and you probably can't see from here but there's about seven or eight birds working the water. So that's where I'm going now. I'm gonna keep on pushing through. Even the shags are getting out of the water and heading down there. Here's one around me which would indicate maybe there is some, uh, some small fish around here too because these guys, they're hunting those small fish. But they're heading out the mouth. A few more birds are joining them, so hopefully by the time we get there, they're still there. Right, the race is on. It's on. They're in front of me. Got about, I don't know, 600 metres, 500 metres. And they work in the water right now. It can end so quickly, so I want to get there as quickly as I can. No mucking around. They're still diving. They're still down there. So we're just going to pump on through without stopping one bit and hopefully they're still there when we get there. It's just a matter of getting there in time because they can be all over in a heartbeat. Woo! And as the odd turns start to hang around me too, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. One right above me up there. G'day mate. He's looking. There could be car wire around here. We're getting closer to their hunting zone. They know where the fish are. That's where we're going. Jeez, it's hard work. It's almost like they're flying away from me slowly. Trying to keep up. Oh, got to keep the throttle down. Yeah, they're up ahead of here somewhere. Straight ahead. Yeah, they're diving. There's fish there for sure. And underneath those kawai, you can often get a kingfish. But I've got to get there in time because they're moving quite rapidly. They're actually moving away from me. It's making it harder because I'm seeing them. They're getting further away all the time. But this bird might be following my lure actually. Oh, I've got to be careful there. Yeah, he's following my bloody lure. That bloody bird is. He's chasing the lure. No, leave it, mate. I don't want to catch him. Don't want to catch him. I'll let that go down the bottom. Shit, there's got to be some fish around here. They're hanging around. Just fuck off. Leave my lure, mate. My way go. Leave it. He's circling again. I have caught those birds. I'm going to slow down for a minute because he's right there, look. Up above me. Leave it, mate. No. Nah. Nah, nah, he's diving on it, shit. Oh, this is water where Kawai can be though. I don't want to catch him. I need to let this go along the bottom more, where he can't dive for it. I've caught those birds before, it's not nice. We don't want that, we don't want that. He's staying with me, he's right here, whole time. Where you go, buddy. Just waiting to get a hit, he's still diving for it, leave it, mate, leave it. Nah, he's still diving for it. Shit, they're all diving for it. Oh, jeez. It's too shallow. Oh, this has stuffed up my plans. This bird's over here, but I need to keep moving. Oh. Well, Murphy's Law, come out here offshore, and now the birds are back inshore, so back we go. They're working in close. That's where the birds have moved to, and I've just come out here. No strikes at all on the lure. I can see quite a lot of birds in close, so that's where we go back in. We keep chasing the birds until we get a hit, and then we get that fish, and we stick it on the live bait line, and we tow it around here, where we see the birds working. Got one bird behind me, been chasing the lure. I am right in amongst the birds, and I'm not getting a hit. This spells one thing. There's loads of those little fish out here, but there's no car wind underneath pushing them up like there generally is. They're just out here and the birds are taking them naturally. This can happen, and you're a fisherman, you know what I'm talking about. It's not that often it happens, but sometimes it does. So my chances of actually catching kawa are very slim. They're out here, but very slim, because there's just not great schools of them. And therefore, we can assume there probably isn't great schools of kingfish underneath them. I've come this far, try and catch one. I've been out here for two hours now, pumping it, and I'm pretty exhausted, but there's no point not uh, in giving up because you never know what can change. One thing I know about fishing, it all change in a heartbeat. One of my rules with fishing is if you're not catching something, change the pattern. I've been in and out, up and down, off the coast here, inside about five, six hundred metres. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to head right out to sea, probably, uh, I don't know, one and a half kilometres, maybe two, to where the bar breaks further out at sea in the hopes that some fish out there working because there's no fish in here other than the small fish. I've already worked that out and it's taken me a long time. I'm now heading out to sea. We've got four birds in front of me out here. Hopefully there's something in the water they're looking at. 
they may be just no they're diving yeah straight out in front of me there so we're going to head out to there and hopefully hook onto something there's a big fish hanging around here somewhere i don't know what it is but there's a stingray just come up could be a kingy i don't know saw a big fin just out here jeez it gave me a fright clearly there's a lot of big fish just underneath me here but i think they're stingrays as i'm going over in the shallow water when the waves hit and i'm disrupting them with the boat it's too muddy to see what they are but they're quite big and creating a big splash around me yeah, it's shallow here going across the bar nothing's taken the lure so i think it's stingray sitting in here big big splashes but haven't actually seen one whatever they are they're not taking my lure so they're not yeah, they're not uh, they're not kingfish and they're not cow white. Oh, jeez, are we on? We get we hooked something then. We got a hit then. It was either bloody hooked into the ground. Or it was a fish. I don't know what it was. It didn't take off like a fish. We just came out past the bar, so we're going to keep an eye on ourselves and point the right way, otherwise we're going to ass over here. Interesting what's going on out here, it's quite different. Different fish, different water, different everything, it's bizarre. I reckon it's a big stingray just there, we're only shallow water, see it's only that deep. Got a wet ass now too. Anyway, we'll keep going. Something can happen, I'm going to go right to the mouth. Fish on! I think we're going to fish on finally. Two hours. Not a big one. Where is he? Oh yes. Stay on buddy. Stay on. We don't want to lose. Oh I lost it. No. Oh. First fish in all that time. Oh jeez. Right. We can catch one. We can catch another one. We have weed on there too. Holy shit. Okay. Well. That was a perfect fish too for what I want. Man, I probably was too fast putting it in. Mind you, you could argue that I might have fucked around with it too and lost it. That's the first one in a long time of fishing. It would have been perfect too. We'll keep on towing the lure out here and carry on. Oh no, shit. I've been right out to the mouth. Fish for about 40 minutes, no strikes, so now heading up the estuary. We've been fishing now for close to three hours, still not towing a live bait. The shoulders are burning, and I'm still hopeful to catch a live bait. But I'm running out of time and I'm running out of energy. I might go up the channel and explore up there, maybe I'll get a hit. Taking a lot longer than I expected to catch a live bait. Well, we've been at the Marpur channel, a couple of strikes, but nothing stayed on. It's a numbers game. There's fish around me. I just haven't landed one yet, and I'll need one for bait. And I don't know how much more energy I've got. I've got to get back to base. That's a long way off. It's going out through the entrance, back in through the bar, over the bar, and along the beach, and back to where the truck is. So it's a bit of a paddle. Something took it. That's a big one. What the hell's that? Stay on, buddy. Stay. That's what I wanted. Oh, no. Are you on? Yep. Yep. Oh. Don't want to lose this guy. Don't want to lose this guy. First fishing, buddy. Three and a half hours. Stay on, please. Please stay on. I don't want a high stick, but I want to. Oh, he's a good size for what I want. Shit. In the boat. Yes. Holy shit, it's taken for ages. It's taken forever to catch that fish. It's in there. It's in there, right there, like that. Please squirm. Yes, he's good, he's good. Call back later, hopefully there's something on our transformer. I'm using a transformer with a jigstar rod, it's a bloody beauty. And a single hook 
your mate uh, Mark Rudolph said, go to single hooks place. And we've got, I finally got my car way up there. And I'm off land, not too far, probably, uh, I don't know, a kilometre maybe. Keeping out of the sun. Got my live boat in the water. And I'm just letting the offshore breeze blow me out to sea. I'm adding a couple of these little sinkers up my line because I've noticed that my fish keeps coming to the top and there's gannets around here and I want it a bit lower down where the kingies are. Also stops it getting tangled around the uh just going down. Stops it getting tangled around the back of the rudder as well. The lactic acid is building up in my arms too much. And I'm still quite far out to sea. Probably about I don't know three or four kilometres out, and uh, I'm I'm aiming straight back in. I wanted to keep on fishing, but I can't can't afford to get blown out, so I'm going in. I think it's got me beat today. The arms are really starting to slow down. If I yeah, if I hit the wall, I'll drop the anchor and I'll just wait. But right now, I just want to get in because the wind is getting stronger. It's blowing hard offshore, and I'm really starting to hurt. This has been a real test. I haven't stopped paddling. It's a real workout. This is the uh, time where you gotta really dig in. But like I said, if I get uh, too tired, I'll drop the anchor and I'll just wait for a while because the lactic acid is really starting to build up on my shoulders, my back, my abdomen, everything. I've got a fish right now. I don't know if I can even play, to be honest. I think I'll just be hanging on for dear life. This is what it looks like when you hit the wall. You can't actually, your brain wants to, <coughs> but your body won't do it anymore. <coughs> this is to get dangerous. You need your strength to get back in. And uh, I haven't underestimated my strength. I knew this could happen. That's why I've got an anchor. That's why I'm gonna drop it right now and rest up. It'll take a while for my body to sort itself. Anyway, we'll report back a bit later on. Just pulled the anchor up now. Had a good 30 minute break. Jeez, <laughs> arms are feeling like uh, they can do a bit more paddling now. That was hard. Glad I didn't catch a fish to tell you the truth because it would have been nearly impossible to keep the boat upright in this weather and also keep playing it. Right, we've got the energy to punch on in. It's about a two kilometer paddle in shore and uh, it'll be good to get on the beach, I can tell you. I'm I'm really stretched. Worst case scenario, I'll drop the anchor and get have another break. That's what you do when you get the uh, lactic acid build up. You take a break when you've got to, you've got no choice. Really having to dig in here. I can see my truck now, it feels good to see it. And the waves haven't got any small up. This is the most paddling I've ever done with only one break. It's going to be good to stop. I've got past the hurting stage and now just concentrating, focusing on keep on going, not stopping. It's a good feeling to overcome that. That, that pain barrier. Keep going, it's a good feeling to push past it. Well, I left. It was dead low tide, now it's high tide. I've been out for about five and a half, six hours, and this has to be the most gruelling kite fishing I've ever done. I've had a 20 minute to half hour break, and other than that, I've been constantly paddling the whole time, and the beach is only 20 metres in front of me. Holy shit, that was hard, Jacker. My legs are going to be like, Almost impossible to use getting out the boat. Here we go, we're at the beach now. Oh, now the leg's going to function. The knees are a bit sore to say the least. Let's drag this boat up. Hey buddy. 
special job, mate. Bit of a piercing. You'll be fine. Here you go, mate. See you later. Thanks for your uh, help. There he goes. Jeez, I'd be gutted now if I saw a big kingfish grab him. <laughs> Here he goes. Just in the shallows there. That you go, buddy. Go on. That you go. You're free. You're free, mate. He's gone. Well, that's me shattered. I wanted to make this video and follow it right through the end regardless whether I had success or not fishing. The thing is, if you go out and do stuff, you are having success because you're out there doing stuff and that's what life's about. And also, you're training your body and finding out about what you can do and you can't get away with. To be honest with you guys, 2k out there, if I caught a big massive kingfish, I would have been struggling to get it in because my arms are already, I'd already hit the wall once. But that's part of what you learn and what you, you gather the information. And every time you go out, you get better. So that's my video. Uh, don't be afraid to give it a crack. If you get hold of a kayak, it's really good for your strength. I found out when I started to hit the wall, I started to use different muscles in my body. I started using my shoulders more, then I started using my whole back and trying different ways because I was resting one lot of muscles to use a, another lot. It's like a training session, it'll take me probably two days, two good days to get over that and then I'll be back into it again. Good luck with your own fishing. Pika, you can't be good, be careful. Right, I've got to get this beast and everything into my truck. Which is up that path up there. It'll be fun. Thanks for watching me.